With most of the front end finally mocked up and completed, just need to powder coat some things, it's time to move on to the lines. So as you can see, we don't have any of the oil lines or any of the fuel lines on the car. Um, they are still attached to the fuel cell in the trunk and still running underneath the car. So we're gonna get those old lines off. They've been on the car for, shit, I think 10 years now. So we're gonna go ahead and replace those and that'll pretty much be the last component on this entire car that has not been replaced in this build process. So she's pretty much brand new. I know you mentioned the front end comes off, but I don't know that we ever showed it completely together. So you can see the radiator, the power steering cooler, the oil cooler, radiator fan, even the front part of the intake. All stay attached. So when you pull it off the car, it all comes together. Which then gives it a really easy access to the engine. With just four bolts, well, six bolts. Went ahead and took a moment to put the uh, front bumper cover back on and kind of laid the front splitter up there just to see how everything looks together. Tons of room now compared to the old VQ turbo setup. You can see where we kind of put the intake now. So we're gonna get that stuff powder coated today. But it's right in line with the front bumper hole. So that's pretty perfect. So you can see we got the oil cooler and the power steering cooler. We may, now that I've gotten this on here, we may raise it up a little bit. You can see it's not too high up in that opening, but we're also not trying to block the radiator too much. So, but there is plenty of air getting to that radiator. All right guys, so we got some exciting stuff today. Um, I'm gonna try this whole camera turned around backward thing. Uh, but as you can see, the car is looking pretty good, but that old intake manifold, I've actually got to give it back to Savannah for her Z. So, look at all this fun stuff that showed up today. I went ahead and bought uh, one of the only intakes. It's actually kind of weird. Some of these companies that make intake manifolds for these cars don't make them for the LS3, for the intake runners. But I we went ahead and went with the Fast 102. I literally have not taken this out yet. I just opened the box, um, but it is beautiful. So we're gonna get that on there. Um, obviously, we also got the intake gaskets. Uh, we went ahead and got the fuel reels as well. So I did take one of those out. Yeah, just pretty black gloss. Um, this thing comes with the fittings as well, which is nice, um, and all the hardware, obviously. So we're gonna get this out of the bag here, and uh, we're gonna go plop it on the car and see what she looks like. Pretty much impossible to unwrap something this big and hold the camera, but it is beautiful. That is a big old intake. That's right, I did that. That was the first thing I thought to do. You're welcome, internet. I might be a little bit biased, but damn, that new fast intake looks good on there. Much prettier than the Holly one. And it's got a much bigger um, runners, I believe. I talked to Texas Speed about it because they're kind of the experts these days. And they told me that this was probably the best one for my application, so of course I ordered it. And luckily it matches up. We were concerned that the angle of the intake would be slightly different, but it looks like everything is still the same, so she looks really good. Very happy with that. The joys of making tough lines. Last night we got all of the fuel lines mounted, finished, finalized. We got their little heat sleeving on it. So we got it all rounded up in the engine bay and onto the fuel cell. Into the fuel filter, which we kind of have an interesting fuel filter on this car. I've used it for years, love it. They look really good though. other side of the fuel lines that we finished, as you can see, it goes back to the exact same setup we had in this trunk for the last, I don't know, five or six years, but decided to go ahead and replace all the fuel lines. She's getting there, though. Great, so a lot got done in this episode in this car. 
Um, I need to go tackle some of the interior, start the wiring inside. Uh, most of that's already done, but just gotta clean up some, some of the older stuff in there um, and match it up to the new Haltech harness. But most of the engine based stuff is done. We're waiting on the headers to come back from uh, being coated and waiting on some new parts like valve covers and stuff like that to show up. But until those things get back from coating, which should be maybe two more weeks, uh, we can't really move any further forward. We got the intake done, uh, we got the radiator all mounted, we got the oil cooler and power steering cooler mounted, got the radiator fan all up in there, got everything powder coated, um, got the coolant expansion tank, got all of the lines, fuel lines, coolant lines, pretty much everything done. We haven't done the oil lines yet. We're not going to do that until the motor is in there with the headers so that we know exactly where to route things. But, this thing has come a long way in just a couple of weeks. So, about to go on this trip here, where we go from uh, Sebring, or New Orleans for Grid Life, then to Sebring for IMSA, and then to the Baja 1000. So, gonna be on the road for a couple of weeks, but when I come back, hopefully everything is here. But in the meantime, go ahead and give us a follow right there, and watch the playlist, and watch the next video. Or the previous video, not sure which one. But anyway, see you guys on the next one.